Hello students, my name is Lina Shinde. I have done my masters in biotechnology. I have been teaching and training teachers for the last 10 years. I also deal with school operations and school management. Let us learn about the origin of life. Now that we are speaking about life, the first question that comes to anybody's mind is what is life? Ask yourself this. What is really life? Is it the way you want to live? Is it what you want to do? What is it really? Biologically, life is the power to reproduce and the power to maintain ourselves. That means that we can obtain nutrition, reproduce and grow. That is what life is. But it is not limited to this particular definition. A lot more aspects of life are discussed today. Now, we will learn about the universe and the origin of the solar system because that's where we come from. I believe we are all star stuff. Most people believe that we are matter. But Einstein's theory of relativity states that E is equal to mc square. That means energy can be converted into matter and we are the biggest example of this. We are not just matter, we are also energy and this energy is coated by sheets of matter. This is just another theory that I have and a lot of other people postulate. But really let us look at what the universe is and how the origin of the solar system took place. Cosmos, the word is very difficult for some people to understand. But it is actually very easy. Cosmos is nothing but energy and matter and their coexistence. And we belong to the cosmos. The study of cosmos is known as cosmology. It is believed that the universe was formed due to a really big explosion that happened really long time ago, billions of years ago. This was the explosion of tightly packed matter. This theory is widely known as the Big Bang Theory. Although the theory is one of the most accepted theories, there are scientists today who flout it or there are scientists today who kind of hold controversies against this theory. If you ever watch TV, you also know that just because the word Big Bang is there, there is a serial called Big Bang and there is this group of scientists who actually work on physics and our physicists and work on this theory. Now as per this theory, this explosion that happened billions of years ago was singular. That means it has one point of contact. Of course the universe expanded post this explosion. Now when the universe expanded, the temperature dropped and since the temperature dropped, there were some gases like hydrogen and helium which were formed first. As the cosmos cooled further, gases condensed and under the gravitational pull, galaxies were planned, were formed. Now, galaxies are nothing but stars, clouds and gases and dust. Now, most of the galaxies are moving away from each other. Our own galaxy is the Milky Way. More than 100,000 million galaxies are present. Let us look at the Milky Way. Our solar system is in the Milky Way galaxy. A solar system is nothing but a swirl of gases or nebula which consists of stars and planets. Our solar system consists of the sun. The sun is the primary star in the solar system. It is because of the sun that the planet earth has life. If you look at the diagram behind, you would notice that there are so many planets. So we let's look at them. You have Mercury, you have Venus, you have Earth, you have Mars, you have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. This is the order in which the planets are situated away from the Sun. Each of the planet has an orbit around the Sun and it moves at a particular speed against in this orbit around the sun. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun 
and Neptune is the farthest planet to, from the sun. Earlier, Pluto was also considered a planet, but now it is considered a dwarf planet and is no longer a part of our solar system. Earth is the only planet in the solar system which can sustain life. So what is so special about Earth that is not special about other planets that enables it to sustain life? Let us take a look at it. Earth, the distance of Earth from the sun is just right that it receives enough heat. This heat does not evaporate the water that is present on Earth completely and the water is continuously cycled in the form of white water cycle on the earth. The second most important thing is that life originated from water. Water is one of the major components of the planet earth and it is because of water that we originated. Of course, the earth cooled down. It was postulated that the earth was first a ball of solid and then it heated due to many reasons and it cooled down again. In this process, the earth's core, mantle and the surface or the crust were formed. The core is made up of nickel, iron, copper and lead. The mantle is there, the surface contains the soil. This soil of course sustains some life like plants and other animals. But like we said, earth is the only planet in this solar system which can sustain life or which has any life. Scientists have been continuously searching for signs of life on other planets, but they haven't found any at least in our galaxy. In fact, there were many expeditions that were sent to Mars, but we couldn't find any signs of life over there. Now, scientists also postulated many theories that led to the origin of life. Let us look at some of these theories, but let me list them out first. Of course, the first theory is the theory of special creation. The second is the theory of spontaneous generation. The third is the theory of biogenesis. The fourth is the steady state theory. The fifth is the cosmozoan theory. And the sixth is the oparin holden theory. Let us take a look at each of these theories very carefully and in detail. Now, as the name suggests, the theory of special creation. Is there something special about it? Let's find out. As per the theory, life generated due to supernatural events. That means there was no natural cause due to which life generated or originated on earth. Now God created life. Of course, this theory is most prevalent and most accepted across all religious civilizations. But it is again a religious theory. It has no evidence but it is still widely accepted. In fact, according to the chapter of Genesis in the Bible, God created the world in six days. On the sixth day, he created man and the woman. The first man was Adam and the first woman was Eve and it is through them that the human race developed. In Hinduism, it is believed that the Brahma created the world. Of course, we have a belief and faith that the three murtis are the creators, the maintainers and the destroyer of the world. As per this theory, it was Brahma who created the world, it is Vishnu who takes care of the world and it is Lord Shiva who is destroyer of the world. Now this again is a religious theory but it is most widely accepted and there are many beautiful stories surrounding it. If you ever get a chance, you could read them up. The second theory is the theory of spontaneous creation. This is also another theory which perturbs many people. It is widely popular in the ancient Chinese, Babylonian, Egyptian civilizations. Now, as per this theory, life originated from non-organic matter. This is a very fumbling statement. In the previous theory, we are stating that life just originated and there was no cause for it. But in this theory, we are stating that life originated from non-organic matter. Now, there were many scientists who postulated or researched this theory. One of them was Anaximander. He said that plants and animals developed from inorganic matter. Now, some of the inorganic matter that we could see is also present in the surface of the earth. 
So, he might have probably thought that the plants and animals developed from this. Another scientist was Epicurus. He thought that insects and animals were developed from the soil because this soil was exposed to the sun and the sun gave it heat and it was also exposed to air. This is also a curious thought and as the name suggests, he is a curious person. Aristotle was another person who said that life generated simultaneously. Now, there is no basis for this and how did life generate simultaneously is a mystery to me too. One of the scientists called Helmon said that life generated from human sweat and wheat bran. When human sweat and wheat bran were kept together, life generated. For me, this really sounds gross. I really don't know. And I wonder where did human sweat come from and where did human bran come from. So, these are some of the theories that we are talking about. The first two theories that we spoke about have no scientific evidence as such. But still, the first one is very, very widely accepted. Let us look at some of the other theories a little later.